This time, we have Unit 2 questions, although you should refer to the original application video, as the questions were better examples for showing off this technique. To apply knowledge, you don't have to overthink or use your imagination. Instead you can use the information to fill in the gaps with a step-by-step -step method. All you need to do is put two and two together, one piece at a time. You can apply knowledge almost by reverse engineering and working your way backwards instead of scrambling for answers. Refer to the text document in the drop box below if needed. Let's take a look at question 5b from the higher AQA 2015 B2 paper. So why did person 2 run much slower than person 1? Well to start with, they began and finished exercising at the exact same time, so the test is fair, and all factors are due to differences between both people. We know that running requires energy. If person 2 ran slowly, their body either produced less energy to run, or was less able to utilize it. What produces energy? Respiration. This means person 2 either respired less and was less able to utilize the energy usefully. We can also see that person 2 had a much lower heart rate and stroke volume, so can be concluded that their heart works more slowly. If this is true, we know that because person 2 can't work as quickly as person 1, oxygen and glucose are delivered to cells via blood at slower rates. But what else? We know that if the cells receive less oxygen, they'll respire anaerobically, causing lactic acid to build up, since the heart works more slowly to break it down and deliver enough oxygen to respire aerobically. This could also be because blood is pumped to the lungs more slowly so less oxygen is acquired by the body causing cells to rely on glucose more heavily for respiration. Let's try question 4C from the June 2013 AQAP2 paper. So why is it useful to have a regenerative battery? We know that when a car breaks, it loses energy and needs more energy to accelerate back to its original speed after stopping, as opposed to if it never stopped. It can be concluded that the battery regains and resupplies the lost energy to the car, so it would almost be like the car never broke in the first place. This means more of the car's energy is used to move the car instead of braking, so the car uses energy more efficiently and the car can go further on the same amount of supplied energy. Furthermore, we know that braking changes the momentum of the car in a short time, so exerts a large force to brake the car. This large force is likely what charges the battery. Don't forget that force times distance is energy. Because of all of this, the car needs less energy to move, and the battery needs less recharging. C2 June 2015. AQA. Question 6D. They say iodine has a low melting point. What does this mean? It means iodine needs less energy for molecules to move around, and less energy for molecules to move around enough to break out of a solid structure and into a liquid. Let's take a look at iodine. What do we notice? Iodine exists naturally in a molecule of only two atoms, which is pretty small. Does this mean the molecules move around more and the melting point is lower because the molecules are lighter? No because in a fixed weight, the weight and number of protons and neutrons are the same, no matter how they're arranged and in what compound or element. What else could it be? If temperatures are basically how fast the molecules are moving, what could slow down the molecules? Intermolecular forces. 
The intermolecular forces between iodine molecules must be pretty small, which is likely because the molecules are smaller and simpler, so less energy is needed for iodine to exist in a liquid state.